point, um, I've gone through and, and connected up the radio to the board and the board of the PC uh, and recall that it actually says that we've got to run through some software install <coughs> before we actually want to um, start connecting the radio up and all that sort of stuff etc. We need to install some USB drivers etc etc. So jump onto the website that I've been referred to you to, um, kilo6julietmike.com and you will see there's instructions on where to go to get the various uh, bits of software uh, that you're going to need. One thing that you need to be aware of, and this is all sort of stuff that you probably want to get started <coughs> before your actual node adapter actually turns up, um, because you want to go and uh, you need to actually, or at least go and have a, a read of this website, because it tells you about uh, registering for a DSTAR hotspot, which you need to do. Chances are you've already registered uh, your DSTAR name or your, D your call for DSTAR, um, but uh, you just want to go and have a look at this, and make sure you're all set up <coughs> before everything arrives, so that way well, you can actually just start jumping in and, and, and having a go, rather than have to do your registration and then wait 24 to 48 hours for that to actually come through. Anyway, uh, like I said, down here it's going to direct me to a website, which is the Dutch Star website. Uh, again, keeping in mind that this runs the Dutch Star firmware, um, and you're going to—it's going to instruct you various bits of different software that are available from the um, the Dutch Star website <coughs> to download and set up before you you know start messing about with it. Now, what you also want to do here is actually register uh, with. Du uh, the Dutch Star website because there's going to be some additional uh, software that's going to be available to you once you actually register. Uh, Dutch Star also offers their own uh, board. If you're interested in that, you can jump on and have a look. Um, the Moencom one is just the one that sort of took my fancy and the one I wanted to go with. So um, go and have a look at those and um, see which one you like if you want to head down this path. But at this point, I'm just going to jump on and go and download some of this software. What I've done is just set myself up with the DSTAR folder on the desktop. Uh, first thing we want to do, as per the instructions, is to go down to uh, the NA tools. In this case, I'm going to have to download the 32 bit because this is an older PC, it's a 32 bit PC. So uh, it's actually running Windows 7 at this point, which seems to handle pretty well. And just as of today, I've just upgraded the RAM, so it's got about 1.5 gig of RAM. Uh, it was currently, it was previously running on about 256 uh, meg, which was, uh, yeah, painful at best. Anyway, all right, so not that one. There we go. There's our folder there, and we're going to save that there. And what you're going to find is some of these are executable, some of these are zipped. Okay, so that's our download completed. I'm just going to jump on here and uh, run the exe file. Uh, now it does actually say to run this administrator, so uh, just to do that, right click on the file itself, uh, one of your options there at the top, this is Windows 7 that I'm running, uh, just run as administrator. And it's going to run the install process. And just follow instructions, I'm going to set this up for all users. And we're just going to do a complete install. I believe that's what it instructs you on the site. And just install. Now you probably just saw that it did actually just come up with the warning saying that um, uh, some of the drivers hadn't been registered. Do you want to continue anyway? Um, obviously you just say yes. And it's now saying please attach your device to the computer at any time after the installation has finished. Alright, now before I go ahead and do this, I'm just going to pop back to the website and see whether there's anything else I need to do. Because I actually want to get the software that's actually going to control the node adapter. Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, WinDV, because uh, the one that I've, I've had on another PC here was messing around about, and it was one that I seem to be most comfortable with. Once we've installed that, the next thing it talks about is uh, setting the jumpers. And you can see there, it's basically saying SW is 1 and 2, SW2, 2 and 3, SW3, 1 and 2, and SW4, 2 and 3. Now, when I was looking at this, I was actually thinking, ah, you know, am I going to know what's going on here? Um, but look, if I just chuck the board up here, give you a quick look. Now, what you'll actually see is uh, these are your jumpers uh, here and here, uh, and there's two more here and here. Um, and they're actually marked S1, S2, this one's actually S3 here and then S4 so they're kind of opposite to where you expect them to be or 
uh, you would assume they would be. Uh, now S1 it says uh, jumpers 1 and 2, so we can see we've got S1 here, and it's in the leftmost position, so I'm assuming that's pin 1 and 2, uh, 3 is open. SW2, it says 2 and 3, uh, so you'll see that's basically the opposite of S1, so it's over on the right hand side, so pin 1 is open, it's on 2 and 3. Now S3, it says 1 and 2, now you'll see that's it there, and there's only 2 pins, so that's obvious. Uh, and then for SW4 it says 2 and 3 so I've got to assume that they're the rightmost um, holding the board like that which is basically the same as your 1 and 2 so it looks like uh, the good news is here it looks like all my jumpers are set and ready to go um, the next step basically it says is to install firmware uh, which you can see you know, get that light, uh, which basically says to install firmware uh, good news is that um, some already in, in have firmware installed. Skip this step uh, if you already have your firmware installed. So we're going to jump right down uh, to uh, what do we got? Uh, step four. It says once you've installed the software, you want to go and run NAW in config mode, and you want to run NAW in test mode. So once you've actually installed that um, NAT tools that you've just downloaded. I'm just going to complete the installation of WinDV here. Get rid of that. Um, you'll actually see uh, over there, it's actually installed uh, two shortcuts, and it's uh, NW in test um, and NW in CFG. So I'm just going to plug this in, uh, just plugging in the USB there. I've got the rest of the radio all connected up. There we go. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have some success over here with it installing the drivers. That's good. It's actually seen the node adapter. Now, after I plug that in, we've also got some activity there. LED one uh, is partially lit up and was flashing there for a second, uh, and we've got a solid green light there on LED three. There you go. You can see some activity over there at LED one. Now let's just run the NW, uh, sorry, NAW in config mode, um, or the shortcut that's on there. Uh, following the instructions, it basically says once you've plugged it in, um, all going well, it should show up your firmware um, version, uh, which you can see basically at the top of the screen here. Uh, it also goes on to say a number of different settings, um, which you can choose. But basically because that appears to have come up identical to the screenshot which we've got there. Uh, timeout 300, delay time 500, keep alive, uh, 20 milliseconds, F066, uh, uh, was it post beaten pattern, etc. Um, now there is some discussion around uh, in uh, RX invert and TV invert. I think that depends on um, the radio, sorry you can't see those there on the right hand side, RX invert, TX invert, I think that might depend on the radio that you're actually using and you may need to alter those settings, um, but at this point I am not going to change anything, I'm saying pretty happy with that, again these settings are probably going to be because uh, Jim already loaded up the firmware for me, uh, so I've got to assume at this point that Jim knows what he's doing, he's the man, and uh, we're going to run with it like that, so uh, the next stage at this point is to Sorry, I've got a couple of PCs going. I keep grabbing the same, the other mouse. Um, so I'm going to go over and run it in test now, and we'll see what this does. Um, now, also keep in mind that there is another tab uh, down the bottom here. Let's go down there to mode. Uh, and again, all I'm doing at this point is just duplicating uh, what I'm seeing on the screen. So pretty much anybody's going to be able to do this. So we'll jump into the menu here. I've actually adjusted these settings, but um, <clears throat> if you're looking at uh, menu 517, you actually need to choose which side of the radio is actually going to operate in data mode. Uh, don't ask me what ATX and BRX is, um, we're just going to choose side B, which I believe is this side, uh, sorry this side here, which is the one we want to um, be playing with, and I believe I can still sort of receive etc on the left. Um, so push the button to change it, uh, push the button and go 
push the button, sorry, the main menu button to go back to change the next one. Um, data speed here we've got it set at 9600 board, which is um, what's expected. And there's also a PC speed, um, which uh, I believe is if you're controlling it via PC or communicating with PC, programming the radio, etc. Uh, the other good thing about the Kenwoods, um, your software for programming the radios is free, if you didn't know that. So a big up for Kenwood there. Uh, anyway, alright, we're going to escape out of that. Um, now we're going to go back over this side and we're going to go to VFO mode. <clears throat> now as far as using the frequency goes, um, one of the things that they recommend is actually use uh, one of the simplex channels uh, for 2 meters and 70 centimeters as far as setting up a D-Star hotspot. I'm a bit unsure about that. Um, I think the good news is with that is if you know, you're driving around and you jump on the simplex frequency and there's a hotspot in range, uh, you can just make uh, full use of that, assuming you can access it. At this point while I'm in testing mode, I think I'm going to go a little bit off that frequency, um, certainly near it, but going to uh, just stay off it, I think, just for testing purposes, um, just because I obviously want to, to test it and not be interfering with anybody that might be trying to use D-Star in the local area. Two meters, what they're actually recommending is um, 145.1375 decimal meg. Um, so we're probably going to go, so what I'm actually going to go is 145, uh, 450. I'm actually going to turn the squelch down there, turn the volume up, to see if there's anything being heard there. I'm just going to quickly put out a call as well. VK2MRX, VK2MRX, is anybody using this frequency? VK2 MRX testing, VK2 MRX testing. Okay, so we've basically confirmed that there's nobody on this frequency. Um, just going to turn that volume down. And what it's actually telling me now to do is to jump into testing mode uh, over here. Um, and so we're going to go to this NW in test. The other thing it tells us to do is to now to grab your D-Star capable radio which in this case is the 91AD again and to match the frequency that you've got on your analog radio which is 145450 okay <clears throat> so you can see on the radio we've got it at 145450 I'm not sure whether you can see that or not at the top, but we're actually in digital mode, so DV mode, uh, as per the instructions. Okay, so turn your DSR radio on, set it to DV mode, the same simplest frequency as your analog radio. Start NDA, sorry, start NAW in test. Um, this should display the firmware name, similar to the one at the following. Click on RF read, and we'll click on RF read. Now before we actually do that, I'm actually going to turn power down to low on the Kenwood, which I think is about 5 watts. Uh, going to hit RF read. But what it says now to do is to uh, click on the read, go down here, click on start, and then to transmit using your D-Star radio on that same frequency. Now what was actually happening when I did the read was it wasn't actually coming up with any headers. Uh, so no information, uh, no other data information was actually coming through. I could hear the D-Star the, the or the digital signal coming through on the analog radio, but it wasn't receiving any information. So what it actually suggested was if you're not getting any result or no headers actually showing uh, in the read screen, is to go here and just tick the invert box, RX invert, which I've done. Gone back and closed that gone back over, opened up the test, bring that over here so you can see it, gone back down, gone to the RF read, just again, just move that so you can see it, again we've just got the D-Star radio uh, in digital mode, uh, on the same frequency that we've actually got the analog radio, and you can hear that in the background there. Just going to turn it up a bit. 
um, and we're just going to key up this radio. Um, now you don't need any repeater information in, all you basically need is your call um, and my call. So my call is obviously going to be my call sign and your call in this case we're just going to have CQ, CQ, CQ. Uh, but I don't think in this instance it's going to matter. I think this is just literally to, to decode the information from D Start. So you'll see me key up here. Actually, sorry, just go down and we'll start this here. And it won't do anything when you start until you actually key up the radio. And you'll see that's actually receiving D Star information there. I'm not sure whether you can see it, but there's actually a signal showing up in that right hand corner there. And obviously every time I transmit, more data information is coming through. And it's actually showing my call sign there. And you'll say no use of uh, repeater one or two. And my call with CQ, CQ. And the P obviously because I'm using the portable handset. Now one other thing you'll notice um, when I key up is that LED one will actually light up. You can see it's actually a partial light there. There we go. Uh, and when I key up, you'll see LEDs 1 and 2 light up. There you go. So obviously there's definitely going to be a benefit to um, <coughs> to picking myself up a clear project box to put this in. You'll see as far as the radio goes, everything appears to be normal. Um, and we'll just turn it up so you can actually hear the digital signal coming through. So thus far, this has all been very successful and a successful test. Um, we're going to jump back on the website and see what to do next.